Okay, today I am talking to Justine Chomsky McDonald as part of our New Year, New You month. Justine, would you like to introduce yourself? I sure would. Thanks, Emily. So, my name, as, as Emily already said, my name, <laughs> but I am an Ayurveda practitioner, a nutritional therapist, and as well as a yoga teacher. And, um, and of course, I specialize working with women with their perimenopausal years, um, hormones and stress and all that fun stuff that women are going through. Okay, so mm. just looking at it from the Ayurveda point of view, how, how does that all, first of all, how does it work? What is it? And then how does it work? How does it help us in perimenopause? Yeah, I love talking about this pr perspective because Ayurveda is based in over 5,000 years of learning of, um, it's the, it's, the longest natural healing modality out there. It's, you know, similar, I tell people, um, I'm not sure if Chinese medicine is as popular there as it is here, but it's kind of like the same um, background as in we use the elements with nature. So when we live in harmony with nature, or harmony with our own bodies, then that all diseases and illnesses can eradicate from our body. So to do a quick overview of Ayurveda, because it can be quite um, intensive and over, you know, it can be overwhelming and stuff, but to give you, you know, a, a good uh, background is we're all born with our individual constitution. And so through there, there's three doshas. So I'll walk through if that's okay, Emily, with you, the three doshas, a quick background, and then that can yeah. kind of get, you know, your audience to kind of be like, okay, yeah, that, that's me, right? So the, the first one is, is Vata, and that's the queen of the doshas. And that is really, you know, characteristics for Vata is like someone that is thin, um, straight hair, uh, maybe smaller features. Um, characteristics are like, busy, busy person, more like a type A personality, um, creative. Uh, let me think what else. I'm trying to think of all that. Um, yeah, very active person, like enjoys running and that kind of stuff, right? A Pitta person is a person that has red hair, kind of has a reddish complexion, doesn't have to be, but has some reddish complexion. This is the fire sign. So the element for um, vata is, is air. And for pitta, it's fire. And so when you have like a skin outbreak or indigestion, that is automatically um, a pitta imbalance. And so you know that fiery energy that you have, that is a, that is a pitta. Um, and then the third one is kapha. Kapha tends to be, I would say, the less, um, not popular, well-known kind of a one. And kapha is like that mother earth. So I always say like when you think of like Oprah, like Oprah is a kapha. It's big bone, big eyes, um, you know, big hair, mother earth, very mothering, giving, um, and then on the, the downside, like can be a little bit uh, couch potato, loves their sweets, doesn't really like um, changes in routine. I see you're laughing. Does anything of this uh, <laughs> hit home with you? <laughs> a few bits, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know, once you can kind of be like, oh, right, I really identify with that. And so we're all made up with the three doshas, but we tend to be more predominant in two of them. So, you know, for me, I can use myself for an example, like, you know, I'm a pitta vata. And so when I get a balance, like I have psoriasis, I have a small amount of psoriasis on my legs. And so when my body and my lifestyle is out of balance, my psoriasis can flare up and I can feel that, you know, or like I'm stressed or I'm agitated. You look down at my leg and it's like bright, bright red. So that's a good indication. There's too much fire in my body. Uh, so that's kind of like 
the three doshas. And any questions with that, Emily, before I kind of go into like another rant? <laughs> no, keep going. This is really okay. interesting. I'm loving this. Okay. <laughs> so with those three doshas, it also, they, they also apply throughout our whole lifespan. So from birth to puberty, you're in the kapha stage. You know, you chubby little baby cheeks and that kind of stuff, right? And then you kind of like, as you're growing puberty, that's where you kind of like a lot of people begin to like thin out and you know you can have blemishes so that's an indication you know of a pitta imbalance and stuff so as you move into puberty that is your pitta years and so pitta is the main part of our of our life span so pitta is from puberty up until perimenopause and then from on perimenopause to you pass away is the vata time. So this is where it gets really interesting with when it applies to women. It's that women think that we can still stick to the same rules as when we did when we were in our thirties. <laughs> and the reality is we can't. And so if you were, already experiencing an imbalance in your body which you know the majority of us do um then you might be experiencing that as you go into perimenopause those symptoms even worse so i'll give you an example if you're experiencing a vata imbalance so vata is the characteristics of dry like when you think about fall and autumn right that is the time of the year of a vata, so there's dryness, right? So if you're experiencing a vata imbalance of dryness, you might be experiencing, you know, dry skin, dander, um, constipation, anxiety, uh, not feeling grounded. You know, you meet those people that are just like so loopy, you're like, they're not grounded, right? Um, so if you are already experiencing an imbalance of vata and you're moving into a vata time of your life, meaning perimenopause and menopause, then those symptoms can in increase. So like increases like. And then we bring into our lifestyle and our food that can make the symptoms even worse. Follow? Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... You know, one of the things like that women don't may not realize, like when they hear like the raw food diet, like not good for women, not good for women over the age of 40, because that's dry, right? And what, we're already moving into a drier phase from an Ayurveda perspective. We're moving into a drier phase of our lives. We experience vaginal dryness, you know, and, and so constipation could increase, you know, gas can increase, all that kind of stuff, right? So if you're eating food that is more uh, air in it, it's going to increase more air in your body. Yeah. So one of the things that I say to women, like, you know, and I, and I know that we talk about this in the Facebook group is, you know, like eating those healthy fats, right? Like, I so important and so i always tell people like you want to nourish your body like from the inside out so i always say you want to nourish you, you need to bring juiciness back into your body <laughs> because because we're losing that yeah right and and so you know having those warming foods, if you're in a vata constitution already, you're already in a vata constitution, then you need like those warming, you, those warming foods. You need the, the self oil massage and there's other like, you need grounding practices, right? So like perfect example, I had a client that came to see me and she was feeling out of sorts and we kind of looked at the whole big picture right and just a simple thing as like i was so she was out of balance with with vata the simple thing is that she was traveling so much and so traveling a lot can increase vata 
movement, air, like that's the whole thing. You know, if you, if you run a lot, like running, if you're not balancing it with something more grounding can bring it more in. So it's so fascinating because we think that we're doing things right. And I think we've talked, you know, talked about this is that everyone's so different. So we think that we're doing things right and good for our body, but it's not particular to our, our individual needs. And that's so, that's so true. It's, um, I see a lot of this, not so much in, in the hub group, but in other yeah. menopause groups, um, women desperately wanting to find ways to lose weight because their, their body shape is changing. And most of the sort of, um, big, big name diets are all about cutting fat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know. And, and you know, we need the avocados and the oils yeah. and all those sort of good things. And it, it, and the same with exercise, you know, I see people going, oh, well, you know, you need to start running more and doing more cardio. And I'm like, oh, PT me says, no, 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 actually you want to be doing <laughs> things that are supporting your body, not, not flattening, you know, flattening yeah. yourself out kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm going to encourage our audience to maybe like be okay from an Ayurveda perspective to have gain five to 10 pounds as you're going through perimenopause, menopause. You don't want to, and I know it's hard. Like I've gained weight, you know, I, I know it's challenging. Like you're, you're looking yourself in the mirror and you're no longer that, that size that you were and things are changing in your body and that you've never experienced. But from an Ayurveda perspective, it's healthy to gain five to 10 pounds because again, we're losing that kapha. We're losing that, that, you know, that, that nourishing that from an airway that's called ojas. So we're losing the juice. And so, you know, we all see those women that looked more aged than that what they are, or they look very drawn or they look dry. They look like a prune, (laughs) right? And so you don't, you don't want that. And that's the unfortunate thing is, is that our society you know, really um, gets down on women for, for gaining weight. And, you know, we're, we're, we looked at, you know, we look up to like the younger women and the, and the thin bodies and stuff. And yeah, that works. That works in your twenties and thirties, but you know, you're moving into a different time where you need that, that little bit of extra, right? Yeah. So new you, new year is, you know, looking maybe, maybe, trying to just sit with the the extra five pounds, you know, and being okay with that. Um, as long as you're healthy. Right. And so that's, you know, from the Ayurveda and then, you know, I know a lot of women deal with, um, hot flashes is probably such a huge, huge thing. And so from an Ayurveda perspective, you have too much heat in your body. So if you're already in a pitta, like for me, that's something that I've known as I'm, something I'm aware of that I have to be moving forward as I hit into perimenopause symptoms and stuff like that was kind of a, a fear of mine like oh my god am I going to be dealing with a ton of pot flashes because I already have too much heat in my body so what are some proactive things that you can do in your life to pull that heat out right and so women hate to hear this but hot yoga, wine, spices, and red meat is not going to help you. And so people are always like, oh my God, Justine, please don't tell me I need to get my wine. I'm not telling you you need to do anything, but how bad are your hot flashes? And that I think that is, that I think is such a, an important message. There are all these lifestyle changes that we can make and you have to decide, is the wine and chocolate or the curry or whatever, is that more important Yes. Than managing the hot flushes. Yeah. And, and for each woman, that's a different answer, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, and some people, may have, well, I can't give up my wine. Okay, then then don't complain about your hot flushes. Exactly. Or, you know, can you, or I say, can you reduce it? Like, can you not have sugar two hours before bed? Because that impacts, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and I also remind women, like, you're in the middle of a new season. 
So let's bring the body back into balance. So take that out for a bit. If you're feeling better, bring it in. And then you might even be like, it's back in my diet and, it, and I'm realizing how crappy it makes me feel. So maybe go to, you know, scotch and water. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> wine, wine tends to be the one that kind of, you know, because of the, the, the sugar content, right? Yeah. With it. So, you know, when we really kind of start to pay attention to what our body needs, um, again, from the Ayurveda perspective and moving into that, accepting it instead of resisting it, there can be so much more ease and grace. And I think that's that that brings us back nicely to the new year, new you. And I think for all of us, 2020 needs to be a year of acceptance, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, having some, some, uh, some changes in the body. It just, is it taking over your life? Right. Like, you know, it, it, to me, it's so fascinating because like I say to you, like, we think we're doing things all right, but there might be just a little bit of a tweak. Right. So like perfect example for a Vata person, avoiding white potatoes. And who would think that, right? Like not just like, so it's not just the raw food diet, but there's like a whole list of foods to avoid and stuff. So one of them's like white potatoes, like, you know, yeah. So you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so that's why it's like when people jump on these bandwagons, um, you know, it's like, is, is this the best thing for you? I don't know. Do you guys have... Um, do you, do you guys have the, there's a, there's a new documentary on Netflix that everyone's talking about over here. It's called Game Changers. And I've based, seen people talking about it. Yeah, I haven't seen based it. Based on a, a vegetarian diet, which Irve is all about vegetarian, but I, I am not a vegetarian. I was at one point, but my body was craving meat. So I honor, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I'm sure we've talked talk I know I talk about it it's like intuitive eating right it's like well my body is craving that but I don't need to have a 26 ouncer I'm <laughs> no. fine with ouncer, right yeah <laughs> or my sister and I were talking about this last night about intuitive eating and she we were talking about how you know people are like well intuitively you know eat and I'm like intuitively I want a box of donuts <laughs> But it's not right for me, right? So it's like it, there, there's a balance. <laughs> but that, I mean, intuitive eating is another one that we can cover off in another um, exactly in another webinar because it's 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 so interesting. And you and also Tanya and also Karis, among the other experts, are all very much about the intuitive eating and mindful eating and stuff. And I, I find yeah. it a fascinating topic. Um, yeah, and yeah. for you know, you guys have similar um, weather, not as cold as us in. Canada, Toronto. Well, I say Toronto because on the other side, it's, it can get worse. Um, but you know, when you really begin to eat within the seasons from an Ayurvedic perspective, your body begins to know it instinctively. So, you know, my sister's a, a, a very Vata type person, so she does not like soup. So you tend to, what you're supposed to eat, you tend not to right? Um, eat it. And so I've been encouraging her to really embrace those warming foods in the winter and stuff. And she's outside all the time. She has a, a farm it's with her horses. So she really needs to. And so she'll crave, um, she'll, after a day at the farm, she'll go and eat. Um, we have poutine here, which is like gravy and ch cheese like, on top of fries, like delicious. But, you know, she's like, but I feel like my body's craving that after being outside all day. I'm like, right, because it's needing that, that warming, comforting food. So once you begin to kind of learn your dosha and eat within that way and with the season, you'll begin to really resonate and it'll become second nature. Like for me right now, to have a salad, like, is so hard, right? Like, so I'm like, okay, we'll put, you know, we'll put uh, broccoli, like cook broccoli in something, you know? So it's like, it becomes second nature and then it, it allows those symptoms to dissipate. And I think we've all got so used to the supermarkets having everything in all year round that seasonality yeah. has just got lost along the way. 
And then when you couple that with the constant sort of diet message that's everywhere around us, yeah. you know, actually just stopping and going into yourself and going, what does my body need to eat now? Is it hot yeah. or cold? Is it savory or sweet? Is it crunchy yeah. or smooth? Yeah. You know, that's such a good starting point because actually if you, if you just, I mean, I, I was, did this the other day, just thought, right, I just need, I, I don't want cereal for breakfast. I don't want yogurt. I don't want fruit. What on earth do I want? Turned out I wanted boiled eggs, hard boiled eggs with um, avocado. I didn't, uh, that was not something I thought I was going to come up with. But, oh my God, it was good. <laughs> oh yes. Put some cucumber and fennet in there. Oh my God, it's my favorite breakfast. <laughs> it, just, it just really caught me by surprise. I was like, oh, I thought I was going to want a banana and some yogurt or something. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's cold, and so it depends on like for the from the Ayurveda, like Vata, they need sweet and sweet and um, savory foods, right? And then Kapha people, unfortunately, again, it's like what you want is what you don't need. So Kapha people, they need more um, like astringent and pungent flavors less sweet and, and and savory right and then the pitta you know they need less um like spicy spicy and sweet food and sour food i really love i love sour food and so i know that's not great for my pitta so i know astringent is good for my pitta because it can pull the the heat out of the body wow we need we need way longer to discuss I all this know. I'm going to call it a day now because I think we've already bombarded people with so much information. <laughs> but I know it's such a topic that I could just keep yeah. on talking about. But no, we'll just, we'll definitely we'll look at the specific foods. I think that would be a really nice separate webinar at some point to look at yeah. the foods that are good and bad for each of the doshas because I think that would be really really helpful. Yeah, definitely. We can go deeper on yeah. another another one but it's just you know it when you kind of bring in the Ayurveda from the perimenopause that we, we are moving into a vata time so if any if you take anything away from this talk is that you're moving into a vata time so that is more movement there's more air so you need to counterbalance that with more grounding and more, more nourishing um things in your life and, and food as well like lifestyle and food that's so interesting. Thank you so much, Justine. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>